Today, it's a watercolor tutorial all about mixing grays and the variety of ways that you can do it. Let's get started. All right, today what we're going to do is we're going to uh, mix grays, and I'm going to show you a variety of ways. The first way is to look at um, gray as a triad. If you take the, um, the primary colors, a red, a yellow, and a blue, and you combine them together, you will get a neutral. You'll either get a gray or you'll get a brown. This is my go-to gray, which is cerulean blue, naples yellow, and um, a permanent rose. So I load the brush up. Clean, clean it, and then go into the next color, and then I'll clean the brush and go into the third color. This is called um, triad work, and you can use this um, lots of times. Well, for any time you want to make a gray, you can use this, um, or a neutral. It's a way of making a neutral without mixing a specific color, but letting them blend together. And then when you pull away, if you squint your eyes a little bit, you'll see that that's a light gray. Now I'm going to make my uh, dark gray triad that I use, which is ultramarine blue. It's going to be ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a burnt sienna. That's my go-to triad for dark gray. So this can be used, um, you know, on the petals of um, this. Well, all of these things can be used in the same way that you use gray, but it's just using color to get there. And it kind of fools the eye because you let the colors mix on the paper rather than you mixing them on the palette. Again, it has to be a red, a yellow, and a blue. So in this case, the blue is ultramarine blue, the red is alizarin crimson, and the yellow is a burnt sienna. And I'm going to put that on the paper. I'm using a flat brush, but you can use a round brush. You can use anything you want. Just make sure that you charge the brush. You know, put a lot of paint on the brush. I clean the brush, then go into the next color, and then I'll clean the brush and go into the final color. So there's a light triad for gray and a dark triad for gray. So the light triad I would use for probably making clouds or maybe the inside of a white uh, flower petal. And the dark triad I would probably use for the dark shadow on a building. Um, I, I use a lot when I'm painting animals, you know, getting involved in the dark uh, fur of an animal. So those are my go-to triads for grays. But what if you don't want to do triad work? You know, what if you want to mix grays? Well, then what you do is you put them together, or mixing them all together, rather than leaving them um, single and combining them. So again, a cerulean blue, a rose, a permanent rose, and Naples yellow, and it makes a nice gray. Now, I've made it too, too red there, so I've got to tip it back with some uh, um, Naples yellow. All right, so there's there's my gray. Now this is a warm gray. It's a relatively warm gray. The reason I say it's a warm gray is because um, the colors are relatively light. Cerulean blue is a light blue. Um, Naples yellow is a light yellow, and um, the rose is a light red. Now in order to make that gray warmer, I'm going to tip it even more by adding some Naples yellow to it, and there's a warmer gray. So I'm going to show you just how, men, how much color you can make when you're using grays. Here's cerulean blue. I'm going to make this a cooler gray. There's my alizarin, I mean not my permanent rose, Naples yellow. I combined them before and that's how I made that initial gray. But now I want to cool it down. Instead of warming it up, I'm going to cool it down. And um, in order to cool it down, I use cerulean blue. A little bit more permanent rose. That is way too red. Naples yellow. Back to the, um, uh, the, the uh, <laughs> cerulean blue. Back to the Naples yellow. Okay, I'm in the gray range again. So I'm just showing you that I, that's where I would start from. That would be a warm gray. But I want to tip it and make it cooler. In order to make it cooler, I have to go look at the color wheel. If you look at the color wheel on the upper right hand side, in order to cool it down, I would move toward uh, blue. I would add more blue. So I add an ultramarine blue, which is not my darkest blue, but it's certainly darker than cerulean blue. And that is going to make a cooler gray. So what you see there is a warm gray on the left where I'm pointing, and then a cool gray just below it. 
but they're all made from the same mix. All these, co these colors, or neutrals, or grays, whatever you want to call them, were made by cerulean blue, um, Naples yellow, and a rose. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my dark triad, which was ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and alizarin crimson. I'm going to mix those all together to get a gray. It's going to be a darker gray because these are darker colors to begin with. Ultramarine blue was darker. Alizarin crimson is a dark red, uh, but and I'm using Naples yellow because um, I just like it. <laughs> I use Naples yellow a lot. You know, and if I had used a different yellow, like a Hansa yellow, um, everything would have tipped much more toward a brown. And I wanted to demonstrate grays, not browns. Okay, there's my beginning gray. That's just putting the... Tr it's, oh, look what I'm doing. Okay, I guess I decided to warm it up with some of that Hansa yellow. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I think it's going to work. Yep, it's going to work. There you go. Definitely leaning more toward brown, but it is a gray. Let's see, what am I doing here? Ultramarine blue back into my mixture. Um, ah, okay, I see what I'm doing. So what I'm doing now is I'm cooling it down. There we go, so that's cooler. That's taking that initial gray mixture and cooling it down by adding ultramarine blue, it, blue to it and a little bit of rose. So you can see you can make a warm gray from that triad when you combine it together, and then you can also make a cool gray. All right, I'm not sure what's happening here. I've gone back to my original mix of cerulean blue, Naples yellow, and permanent rose, but I'm off camera. Oh, I see, okay, I'm just showing Oh, I see what I'm doing. I'm showing that you can have a, a block of a color like that. Let's say you use that as a shadow, and then you can drop some Naples yellow right inside it. it. You could drop any color in there, but Naples yellow will sort of make it not just one color, but, um, you know, that's a beautiful thing about watercolor. As long as things are wet, you can drop some color into your the puddle that you have on your paper. So look at all those colors. I mean, that's a lot of colors. So gray, and, and you know, I would argue that even though they're all grays, there's not a gray in the bunch. There's the light triad, and there's the dark triad, and if you squint your eyes, you'll see that uh, the light triad probably is in the range of, say, uh, one or two, and a value range in the dark one is way down into five. And there's all the, the uh, different grays that I mixed and showed you how to do here are some great artists, and let's look at how they use grays. This is Winslow Homer, and you can see he did the same thing that I did with those triads. He probably used similar colors as well. Definitely Naples yellow happening there. This is an oil by Winslow Homer. The warm side of the rocks is a warm gray, and the cool side of the rocks is a cool gray. This is, um, this is John Singer Sargent. Look at the neutrals he's using here to describe on well, the water behind and also the wrinkles in the clothing. This is a really famous John Singer Sargent painting. You know, it's almost all neutrals except for, you know, her lips, her nails, and that little bit of orange. Amazing. Um, Cezanne, these are really, really cool grays. Look how cool, almost cold they are. But the fruit, it makes the fruit much brighter and warmer because he has it's surrounded by cool grays. The next is a, a Cezanne with much warmer grays. There's a lot of yellow in those grays. And, um, and that's just a way to manipulate temperature. You know, you can decide if you want things to be warmer or cooler. Uh, this is Charles Reed. And look at the triad work he does in the rock formations. <laughs> he just, you can see... Uh, a lot of the colors that I just used as well, but he's just he just really lets color dance. But it creates a neutral, which would look very different if he had painted the rock just one color. This is um, Charles Reed again, instead of warm grays created by triads, he's, here he's making cool grays. See underneath the boat, he's using the same triad that I was using to make a cool gray, and also on the man's skin. Uh, this is Monet coming up. You can see some really cool grays happening here in the snow. He's got a lot of purple or violet going on in the snow, uh, the shadows of the snow, I mean. And now he's manipulating and making really warm grays. It's sort of amazing how warm all those grays are and how he creates neutrals by putting colors next to each other. 
So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and use neutrals when you can. Um, please join my YouTube channel if you haven't done so yet. At least to half the people that watch these haven't joined yet. Please join. It's free and it's fun. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.